Hello, fourth and fifth grade. Uh, this week's a little funky because fourth graders are now back in school and they're going to get a live lesson. And I wasn't quite sure how I wanted to do it with fourth and fifth being separate. So I'm just going to record a separate lesson here. So if you're an at home learner, fourth or fifth grade, you can watch this to see what we are doing for our art lesson this week week. So before we get into it, I want to show you a little bit of information. Let's see if I can figure this out. Oh, there it is. All right. So this week we're talking about value. And value, remember, is the lightness or darkness of a color. But what happens when you want to show value and you're using a pen or a marker? You have to use a different technique. So here are three techniques that you can use. And we're actually gonna use a fourth, but. So value, if you want to show a shadow or make something look darker and you're only using a pen or a marker, you might end up using this that you see in the hand, which is called hatching. And hatching is just small lines lined up either in a curve or straight. The more lines there are, the darker it looks. In the apple, you're seeing cross hatching. And cross hatching is where you go one, two to three to four different directions, crisscrossing over itself to show value, like in the leaf or underneath the leaf where you see that shadow. The last one you're seeing here in the eyeball is called stippling. It's a lot like pointillism where you're using small dots. And the more dots there are, the darker it gets, the fewer dots, the lighter it is. So in the middle of the eye, they put, it's almost solid full of dots. And then around the whites of the eye, there's just a few dots, not stippling. The last technique that we're going to be using in our example this week is kind of like scribbling, right? Just kind of small, crazy lines. The more lines there are, the darker it is. The fewer lines, the lighter it is. Let me go ahead and show you a quick snippet of a video that shows you hatching and cross hatching in uh, real life. What is cross hatching? Well, when you draw with black ink on a sheet of white paper, all you can ever hope to achieve is a black and white drawing. So hatching is a simple method of using parallel lines to build up areas that trick the eye into seeing tone. You can think of tone in this case as shades of grey. Cross hatching is when you add another layer of hatching in a different direction. And this increases the tonal value or it makes a darker shade of grey and adds variation to what is still a black and white drawing. By adding more layers in different directions, you get the effect of darker tones or shades. Now, cross hatching is particularly useful when trying to give the effect of graduated shade, which we use to give a feeling of depth or 3D-ness to a drawing. I'm actually going to stop it there. So in that example, you saw where he went from kind of a medium value with the H, and then he just made it darker and darker and darker by adding and overlapping more and more lines. So that's hatching and cross hatching. But you get the idea. If you don't have a a tool like paint or pencil that you just can mix or add more pressure, you could still show value. It's just adding more or less ink to the paper in whatever format you're using. So today for our project, we are going to be using um, our hand as the basic, the basic shape, and we're going to be showing value. And we're going to show value in four different ways. So I'm going to show you two examples right now. In one, I used a pen. So you could use a pen, a gel pen, any kind of like real thin writing utensil. And the next one I use a marker and you'll see that there's quite a big difference. It's a lot thicker with the marker. All right, so here's the hand one. I have stippling, cross hatching. Oh, where is it? The uh, scribbling method. And then over here is the hatching. So that's in a pen. And then on this one, I use marker, much more bold. It's a lot easier to see the techniques, the stippling, hatching, scribbling, and cross hatching. 
All righty. All right, let me get up my workstation. You are going to need, I'm using a square piece of paper. I think that fits best with my hand. So if you have um, a square piece of paper that your hand fits on, that's perfect. I'm gonna start off with a pen. It, even if I'm using a marker, I'm gonna outline my hand with a pen because the marker just makes a mess on my hand. So I'm gonna either way start off with a pen. Let me show you my workstation here and then we will get going. All righty, so here is my piece of paper. The first thing I'm going to do is to trace my hand. I am right-handed, so I'm gonna lay my left hand down on the paper. Um, I have my watch and usually I would take that off, but we'll work around it. And you're gonna go all the way down to your wrist. Really spread out your hand to fill up that space. All right, so. If I can't quite connect the lines right away, I can come back and fill those in like around my ring here. All right, and I'm just taking my time. Notice I am trying to hold my pen as vertical or up as down as possible. And that makes sure I don't end up with really skinny or really thick fingers that are not accurate. The more vertical and even you hold it, the more accurate it'll be all around. Okay, there's mine and Y'all, we're going to be adding so much on this that don't worry too much if that ended up as kind of a funky shape. Step two, once you trace your hand, step two, you're going to fold your paper and you have a choice. You could fold it. This one, I folded it in fourths by folding it in half, meeting up my edges one way and then bringing down the other way. That created the fourths. The other way is diagonal by diagonal where you take corner to corner and fold it on the diagonal of the paper and then diagonal the other way. Two different techniques, your choice. I'm gonna fold this one in fourth this time. So I'm gonna take top, meet it at the bottom, walk my fingers up, slide them across. And that creates that crease. And then kind of push that middle down and then fold this across, hold it. I like to kind of pull out that edge to make sure it's gonna be nice and crisp corner and press it. Now these are just guidelines. These don't have to be, you know, you don't have to like press them down with a ruler or anything like that. They're just guidelines to follow and open it up. You can still see that kind of in my camera here, the, the lines, don't trace them, but just remember that they're there because that's gonna divide our areas. I'm going to use a marker so you can see it really well. All right, so the three, the four techniques, hatching, cross hatching, stippling, scribbling. Start with whatever you want. I'm gonna start with hatching. It's the most basic, it's the lines. We are trying to get our hands to look somewhat 3D. And the way we do that is by adding value around the edges of the fingers, starting dark and letting it go really light in the middle. And then for the background, we're gonna just try to get an even medium value on all the different areas. All right, so let's start with hatching. I'm gonna start in this corner here. So I'm gonna take my pen, I'm gonna pick a direction. I'm gonna just come straight down this way. And I'm gonna start off by doing a quite a few lines close together right along the edge of my hand. And that's just kind of going to be my starting point. Now, here's the deal. Sometimes we forget what we're doing and we go past that fold. Try to pay attention to where the fold is so that you don't go past it. Because that other section over here is going to use a different value technique. All right. So that's just like an outline. What I want to do is come in with lines that are a little bit more spread out to get the medium value right past that. All right, so I'm going for a medium value right against that sort of outline I created with the dark value. Again, just fewer lines, more spread out. This works the same with a pen or a marker. And that's it. So you can see you kind of have a dark around the edge and then it comes into a medium. And you could come in here and fine tune it as much as you want, adding little bits here or there. Now for my background, again, I want a really flat medium value. So I'm just gonna 
make straight lines that just fill this space across, trying to keep it as even as possible. So I'm just gonna go about that distance away apart. I'm not using a ruler and that's totally fine. My lines are not perfectly straight, but they're pretty even. And don't forget this side is also part of your background. I'm trying to line up my lines at least a little bit here. And then make sure you take it all the way to the edge of your paper. Okay, so that's my hatching area. That is done. I'm gonna move on and I'm gonna do, I think I'll do stippling next, the dots. And this one takes a while. So first thing you're gonna do like last time is go right around the edge and create a nice dark outline. Again, this is an area where you might forget that that fold was there and you might go over the fold with some dots. That's okay if you do, but just try to keep it inside of this quadrant or this area. All right, I'm gonna try to work fast so I don't bore you to death, but I'm gonna keep doing these dots and then I'm gonna come in and do a few dots coming in from there to create that medium value. All right, I'm probably gonna speed this up, so I'll just work quietly here. Actually, instead of speeding this up, I'm gonna pause this, pause my recording. And then I will come back once I'm done doing the stippling. Okay, so I finished the stippling here. You can see that um, I went all around the edge with a nice dark solid set of dots and then kind of let them come in slightly to create the medium value. And then all around the outside, I just created an even scattering of dots to create a medium value. I'm gonna rotate this so I can work up here. The next one I'm gonna do is gonna be cross hatching. This one goes pretty fast. Uh, start with fewer lines than you need because you always know that you're gonna overlap some more. So I'm gonna pick one direction. I think I'm gonna go uh, horizontal first and I'm just gonna come in from the edge of my hand horizontally. Remember, we're just working with the edge here and watch this part area. That's kind of flat. So don't put too many lines there yet. We'll come in with our vertical lines there. Same thing here. Notice it's kind of weird. Oh yeah, here's my fold. I'm gonna stop there. I might put a few, but it's kind of a flat area. So now I'm gonna come vertical and come and crisscross over those real thick around the, right around the edge and then fewer lines as it gets away from the edge. That creates that dark, value right around the edge of the hand and the medium value towards the center of the hand. And we do that to create that shadow that looks like it wraps around the hand. All right, so I'm gonna come across again with a few vertical line or horizontal lines to create that change in direction and the value. All right, cool. Now I'm gonna do my cross hatching background. So I'm gonna spread these out pretty good because this is my first direction and my second direction will make it even darker. And I don't want my background to get too dark. I'm going for a medium value. So there's one direction. Now I'm gonna crisscross this way to get the cross hatching. And I'm going all the way to the edge of the paper. There we go. Last one is the scribbling technique. There is a technical term, I can't remember it. So it's just making little squibbly, scribbly lines. And again, this area I'm working in the wrist, I'm gonna rotate this, in the wrist. So I'm gonna go all along the wrist on this side, making it nice and dark uh, with a lot of lines. So really, remember that automatic drawing we did during surrealism where you were just supposed to kind of move the hand however it felt nice. Same thing here, just kind of scribbling, moving the hand, letting it move around. Now, notice I'm on my second layer, a little bit in from the hand, and I'm not touching as many lines together. They're a little bit more spread out. Same thing on this side. So I'm gonna go right along the edge, doing a really thick, overlapping, scribbly line 
trying to get a nice dark value. And that's just by, and I'm not like coloring it like I would like fill in an area with a marker typically. I'm really trying to get that organic moving line. All right, second row is a little bit more spread out. That's my medium value. And then I might come in with just a little bit more just to kind of help that transition into the white of the arm. There we go. All right, now my background and then it's a finished complete artwork. All right, here we go. My background is just scribblies, really loosey goosey background, trying to get the same tech, same value that I got in the background of all the other quadrants. Pretty even, there it is. Okay, that easy, my friends. So that is our value hand drawing. We're showing four different techniques to show value when you have a marker or a pen. And the hand was just a really easy template to start with. If you have a different idea you wanna try instead of a hand, let me know, give me a shout, or just give it a try and see how it goes. All right, friends, thanks for joining me today. And I can't wait to like see some of you in person. So let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, see you soon.